What's up, you guys? Before we get into this most excellent episode of Joy Tactics, I want to let you guys know that I'm going to be in New York City on May 5th. That's right, New York City on May 5th, Cinco de Mayo at Union Hall. Get your tickets now. Link in the show notes. It's going to be fun. It's going to be fucking lit. I'll see y'all there. And uh, one more thing. Enjoy this most excellent episode of Joy Tactics. He's He's learning. Learning. By the way, where is Eric? You just you just totally just like hijacked, <laughs> like just came in, grabbed the mic, and Eric is just like picking up where his clothes he? right now. <laughs> He's crouched on a stool. <laughs> Does he want to come back? Is well, he okay? Why? Why do you guys want him to come back? Welcome to Joy Tactics, the podcast dedicated to all things joyful, joyous, and meeting as many celebrities as humanly possible. Hosted by Eric Rahill, Nate Veroni, and Jack Bensinger. Enjoy. So, okay. We all know that there are things called homes, right? This is where well, you live. If you're, fortunate, yeah. if you're fortunate enough to have a home, this is where you live. It's where you sleep. It's often where you eat. That's where your family lives, your pets. But what do you do if you go on the road? You're traveling. You're doing sold-out shows across the country. You're doing medical tourism, whatever. Where Which do you country? stay then? Which co- Yeah. You, you, you don't have a home there. So what you have to do is stay at another type of place, which is what they call hotels. Should you be so lucky? Should you be so lucky? Now, there's so something that's that what, I say at the end of we all, a little peek behind the curtain, all three of us do stand-up comedy. Okay, cat's right. out of the bag. It's true. Right. We do. And we're crushing okay? it. Okay. And it's nothing to be ashamed of. Mm-mm. So we're crushing it incredibly so. Um, mm-hmm. You couldn't imagine the types of 45 tickets we do in Seattle, stuff like that. Yeah, okay? right. And that's not even And it's even a little bit more than that, to be f- just, let's just be honest. It's okay. <laughs> but one of the shows was about 45 people. One of the shows was 45 after 98 people saw that first show. You know what, uh, you know what I just thought of just now? Yeah. You know how people like put out a poster and it's like <laughs> this, like, fucking 50 city tour with and it says like sold out sold out sold out and you're like damn like they're really like selling tickets mm-hmm. you could do one of those tours but have a venue with a capacity of like two people and right. just look like you're selling out well shows you could do country. why don't you do in call comedy the in call comedy club <laughs> come to my house yeah just i'll go to your room you have your friends over <laughs> There's a video oh. of like Shine Down or like one of those really uh, POD type of bands or something that does like WWE genre rock. There's a video of them on YouTube doing like an acoustic set for a bunch of people in like the early 2000s in like brown Hurley hoodies. And <laughs> they're listening to them just like rock out in their apartment, smoking hella cigarettes. You got That's like cigarettes. so far sounds. We need to do Joey Tactics so far sounds. We need to do that, that, whatever that do is. Do you know? Oh, Nate, you would love so far sounds, dude. So Far Sounds is a way to bring music back to smaller abodes. This is what, remember remember that guy that lived below us in Chicago named Dank? Yeah. Remember uh, Dank? Barely. Dude, you would remember Dank. <clears throat> he would ha- he would throw So Far Sounds shows in his apartment. Basically, So Far Sounds Just hits people up show. for apartments for a house show. Mm-hmm. Is this like I mean, a so- company? It's a movement. <laughs> okay dude <laughs> oh man you're so tapped so, into movements and i don't like uh, to yeah right i am i don't like to brag about that though <laughs> so what what i'm saying is and what you guys are saying is well well what no what i was gonna say is about doing stand-up to tie it back in is that a lot of people say get home safe okay what do i like mm-hmm. to say mm-hmm. i like to say but and then once you're at home, be safe at home. Because a lot Stay of people, safe at home. a lot of people who getting home, getting home is the safest part of the drive. It's the safest part of your day. Sometimes the most, sometimes the safest place you got is the most dangerous place you'll ever be. That's what I'm saying again. <sighs> that you hits home so hard it makes me emotional mm-hmm. almost to hear that. Well, we'll look because... at you right now because you're in a hotel, and I know that a right. bunch, you were, there's a bunch of, you know, Airbnbs that all your friends are staying in right now, but because of your violent tendencies they wouldn't allow to you stay to stay with them mm-hmm. can you do a hotel review right now of your current well, let hotel me f- that you're in let me throw it down like this i don't want to expose anybody this is just how it goes sometimes but we are staying 
and this will be over, this festival will be over by the time this comes out. So I'm not doxing anybody. We are staying in a hotel called the Thompson. Okay. Sarah Sherman in Austin, is here. Texas. In Austin, Texas. Now, here's what's curious. They, <laughs> what pe- we are constantly being divided by class everywhere we go, whether we like it or not. So here's what happens. Sarah, what Except hotel are you staying at? I'm staying at the Thompson. And I said, that's interesting because I'm staying at a place called the Tommy. Now, listen <laughs> to this. Apparently, what they've done is they have something called the Tommy, which is much smaller rooms, the toilets in the shower. Uh, in the shower. basically my the desk is on the sink right here it's a little bit cramped um, for the lower level comedians for if, if you're on <laughs> SNL or whatever you have why done are this you there that. Eric you're, huh? why are you in the they must have, there must have been a clerical error so I, <clears throat> it's whatever but the higher profile comedians go to this place called the Thompson <laughs> which is I was in, in Sarah's room yesterday F- full couch full black toilet and it's not in the shower uh the mini bar um this is how this is how revolutions begin is little discoveries <laughs> like this you know what i'm saying being well, smacked in some place called the tommy when the richie riches get to go to the thompson i won't I'll stand say. for that no here's what i'll say man and this is let's stick to <clears throat> this as soon as we go public with joy tactics right now it's we haven't pushed it publicly much, but once this thing goes out, Eric, it looks like you're drinking shampoo. What is that water bottle? Yeah, that is kind of. That's strange. very funny to make fun of oxygen enriched purified water called Cielo. <laughs> what the fuck is that? How much? They do uh, it different in Austin. How much was this? Uh, Two seventy five. <laughs> that looks like an eight dollar water. I know. I bought it thinking it was. It um, looks like soap. Is sure? it metal or is it it's a not dish soap, blue a plastic, glass? dude? Oh, it's okay. blue plastic. We love water bottles on Joy Tactics. So what I'm saying is, once we do finally get to the levels of success, which are incoming faster than a fucking asteroid on crack, basically, what I'm saying is, what I'm saying is, and an asteroid, by the way, is basically one giant intergalactic crack rock. That's what's also interesting to me. That's right. Smoking a whole asteroid. Yep. (laughs) Smoking a whole asteroid. That's basically what the sun is doing. The sun is freebasing. Right. So what I'm saying is, that's right. Well, there's no oxygen. Well, it, right. no, it destroys. Saying, well, I don't understand how the sun works. We'll just figure it out later. Okay. So what I'm saying is joy tactics. I can't remember what I was talking about. And that's fine. We can move on. Hotels. Right. What we're covering this episode is hotels in the hospital- hospitality <laughs> industry. <laughs> <laughs> and we want to get to the bottom of can I give can I give people out there a practical so cuz a lot of people listen to this and they can't walk away from this podcast with any nugget of knowledge or something that they've learned and you know they 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 walk away with nothing often from mm-hmm. this podcast okay and I know you guys will disagree with that whatever you guys are going to say they walk away with having um amazing conversations and this bettered their day and made them happier yeah, but I'm trying to give people something practical, and this is real. Check for bed bugs in your hotel, okay? If you're staring in a Marriott, and this is what you do: you go into the bedroom corner, bugs, lift up the Cute. the uh, fitted sheet, okay, and go into the corner of the mattress, the corners. That's where they, that's where you can see them, okay, and just check the corners for bed bugs that's my practical tip okay. let's go back to the let's go back to the amazing conversations and comedy well, let me piggyback on that let me piggyback on that practical tip number two then go behind, there's a tv on a cabinet take the tv off post on craigslist to shiba lg flat screen blah 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 sell that thing cheap <laughs> 70 bucks then what you do is you go to costco you replace it with an identical TV that is much cheaper. Then you're walking away with at least twenty three ninety nine. And check for quarters, by the way. Look behind the drawer. There's usually a quarter or two right there. What's that? A fraction of nothing, right? No, that's nearly checks mix. And a lot of people would fucking kill their family members just for one of them brown crispy things that everybody talks shit about. So what I was going to say is that I just remembered... I don't think that if given the opportunity to stay in the Thompson, 
that I would fucking stay there. Right. Okay. Because of your class. To be quite frank. Uh, class solidarity. A- activism. Right. Because I'm literally, if I see somebody, I can't think of an analogy, but something like if I bought a sandwich and somebody behind me bought a sandwich and they didn't have avocado on it and I did, I would say, dude, put avocado on that right now. If I see somebody in line at guacamole, at Chipotle rather, and they don't get guacamole, I go, dude, what's your Venmo? It's guac day. Wow. Wow. So, so what I'm saying Yeah, I'm feeling kind of, because if I were Sarah, I would be fucking fighting for my life for me to get into the Thompson room. uh, You know what I'm saying? What are you saying? Well, if I were Sarah, I would be fighting for me, her close friend. Oh, I see what you're saying. To also be where she is. And yet I haven't heard a peep from her about have this. You, have you seen That's making anyone, me question her. <laughs> you said you've seen the rooms in this nice hotel. Right. And they're, I feel like in nice hotels, the rooms, all of their money goes into making the lobby, making the facade look incredible for these hotels. And then you go into the room and you're like, this is just a normal fucking hotel. Like, right. why am I paying like three hundred dollars a night for this shit? And they well, try to fool some, you and into can thinking I be that honest you're with in you some guys? high class with the bar, with the fucking the 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 lobby, with the pool, with the amenities. And it's like, dude, give me a nice room. If I'm if this if this hotel, right. and you're, right. you're getting pissed off, what? You're getting pissed. You're getting angry at me talking like this. No, I'm, I'm just nice mis- making me think. Well, I've I've I'm thinking I've never. <laughs> I've been staying in more hotels, but I've it's yeah, always been paid for by something. That's an evil face. <laughs> <laughs> if I was paying the whole price for a place like this, I would be losing my damn mind. You know what I mean? Because you'd be feeling ripped off. Of course, I know what you mean. I'd be feeling ripped off. Oh, this is this place is better because it has concrete walls and a geometric <laughs> uh, coffee table that you can't even use. Well, it's good uh, in a time of war that his stuff is good, right, but you're right. not at war. You're at paradise. Exactly. I think someone just. I think Have you guys seen too. Civil War? No. Yeah, no oh, which I'm, one? I'm boycotting Aven- it. Avenger Civil War. <laughs> no, Eric. Are you talking about the? You one mean war? Alex Garland's A24 Civil War, starring Kirsten Dunst and all the rest, <laughs> and Jesse Plemons as a psychopath? <laughs> no, I just I haven't got a seen text. That shit. Eric, I just got a text. From who? It, it's from Sarah saying, "Tell Eric to open the door." Lemma. Oh, it's Sarah. <laughs> okay. Okay, this is perfect because I have something I want to call her out about. Okay, so this is what happens on Joy Tactics. Yeah, we weren't even planning for celebrity to guests that we've had on two times before and calls into the show sometimes at the very end. Okay, so... What part of the the podcast are you guys at? This is actually funny because we're doing the part where we talk about something that is basically (laughs) something you need to be speaking on, Sarah. Oh, women's, women's issues? Yeah, exactly. You, yeah, we're we're, about. you know, your your publicist doesn't let you speak on those right now. <laughs> but what we'd like to ask, we're talking about hotels, and we're talking uh, about how right now you are basically staying in the upper class one, and Eric <laughs> is staying in the mixed income hotel housing. I'm in the have, now, and Eric is in the have not. Right. So what I'd like, so but we're talking about the ethics of these practices and I'd like to to bring up a a case I won't say the specifics because this is a project (laughs) that hasn't released yet but you were on they are a little baggy I think Eric's pants are a little baggy well that's because he's self-conscious about really big or what maybe your balls aren't big enough (laughs) (laughs) what did he say he got mustard on his pants last night at Whataburger <laughs> uh, well that's no, no please please continue continue oh uh, thanks so what I'm saying is <laughs> you stay we, we were working together in a country that I can't mention but it's just north of America and <laughs> it was an incredible project everybody will see that I have only mentioned 17 times on this podcast <laughs> and you were staying in a hotel which was probably realistically seven hundred to seventeen hundred dollars a night, and I was staying in a scary thing, a tower that looked like a Soviet, whatever. That you f- that you claimed was emitting an electrical buzzing sound from the walls. I have it on video, <laughs> and it's not from the walls; it's from outside, like the black smoke monster in Lost. <laughs> it's a clear. Okay, Why so is what Nate I'm saying bored is, and texting right now? 
because I'm just I I I I'm I'm. Well, he's preparing I, to I, litigate. I just wish you guys would talk about something <laughs> fucking interesting or ask me a question or you know. I got a question. The breathe right strip is on, huh? <laughs> You know what? I'm seeing a lot of of really high intensity salespeople wearing this online, like alpha males. And I'm like, am I one? Am I like them? Is this like, are we the same? Yes, Nate. You're doing Zen. You're putting on breathe right strips. You're meditating. <laughs> it's not I think ironic. I'm just like, I think I'm just like a high velocity, like inside sales You're alpha br- male are trainer. Are you breathe maxing? breathe maxing yeah <laughs> basically yeah yeah have you ever put on one of these yeah it makes you feel like a god breathe right strips by the way Hi, sarah eric. you're locked in for the next three hours by the way just <laughs> you you thought you were visiting eric just hi i just wanted to check in and say hello you're in you're on the podcast now as a guest I, we're promoting this everywhere I, I begged to be on the episode i stood outside the hotel room and knocked and waited to be let in so sarah yeah Tell so everybody. I was in the eighteen hundred dollar night. Yeah. You were in the fancy hotel, but what's yeah. ironic, and this is God teaching us once again, what happened with the electricity? Well, what happened with the hot water? Right. The I was told. So I came downstairs into the lobby at this undisclosed location at six in the morning. Schmore Schmeasons. What was that? <laughs> yeah, let's just say it rhymes with poor peasants. Right. And a, a a wonderful woman met me in the lobby and she was like, Sarah, um, uh, Miss Sherman, I'm so sorry to tell you this um, before you go to work um, at six in the morning at a workplace that I shall not name. But let's just say it rhymes with television mo. And <laughs> Wait, what's that? <laughs> it rhymes with television mo? Just say what oh, it is. No one even show. knows what you're referencing. Like, so, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it, doesn't, so, it doesn't it doesn't yeah. she was like i we just I hate, to, I hate to inform you at six in the morning but we do have to shut off your hot water and your electricity and i couldn't kind of metabolize that kind of information at six in the morning so i just went ah whatever i went ah whatever i come back from a 17 hour work day covered in like 18 pounds of makeup sweat and tears i was crying that day of course and I go to take a hot shower to kind of like wash off the tragedy of the day. And which I've she, spoken about on here. As, as she has warned me, there is no electricity, nor is there hot water. So what is God saying there? Because he was taking care and protecting of the people who were sitting in the cursed tower of the have nots. And meanwhile, in the haves, God was punishing you and making you sleep in your pile of tears. Well, God's hand of justice, I think, was saying just because someone, just because you were have nodding, has nothing to do with me having. So I actually don't think it had anything to do with me being in the s'more smeezins. And but you why was there electricity? Your electricity from your hotel was floating outside of my hotel. <laughs> I See think what I'm that saying? God was giving His toughest challenges to His strongest warrior. Sometimes said, the toughest challenge you ever have is the easiest thing you'll ever do. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes a letback is a setup for a come up. Sometimes a suck off is a, <laughs> is a suck up. You know what I'm saying? For a, all right, all I right. think that God was trying to be like, because because sometimes I'm convinced that money can buy you happiness. You know, because I'm like, what's not to be happy about? I have a shirt. I got new shoes. I'm so happy. But you know, as they say, more money, more problems. Can I say something? Eric just did a cool, <laughs> cool gesture. Sarah, I think that fame, money, and success has warped you in a way that you're unrecognizable <laughs> from the person that I used to know. And I just want that person back. And I don't know who I'm speaking with right now. I don't know who this version is of you. But I think that this has totally destroyed you and wrecked you in a way that is just... Um, it, it, it's, it's not Johnny good. Depp's transition. So Nate, you inside. don't think that I'm a queen that deserves to be treated as such? Well, if you put it that way, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now that you no, reframe it, na- no, no, no. Now that you're Nate's... talking queen logic, yeah, I, I actually agree <laughs> with this type of speaking. Now, don't you think? If, 
You look like this, act like this, and rock like this. You deserve <laughs> a little bit to get the red carpet rolled out for you. And when Jack <laughs> comes to pick you up from the s'more smeezins, when you go outside to get into his car, and he's not four inches away from the door. Did, wait, did you tell this story, Jack? No. So this is some queen. Do you want to know what it's like to be a queen for a day? Uh, more than anything in the world, Mr. Chairman. Jack, Jack Bensinger. He comes to pick Hi, me up from the you? hotel. Hi, how are you? Okay. I step out of the hotel. I crane my neck like this to the right, to like the left. Like a crane. Just to look for where my friend is in his car. And because I did not see my friend in literally 0.4 seconds, I was ushered back into the lobby by a valet guy going, Miss Sherman, Miss Sherman, please, please stay inside. It's so cold. I will go get your friend. And I was Probably like, no, 60 I think degrees. <laughs> I go, I think my friend is like right, you know, a couple feet away. And he ran outside faster than a speeding bullet and made Jack pull all the way around so that he, he, he was um, closer to the door. That's so what, what it was is there's a valet ring or whatever. And I didn't drive into the no. valet thing. I just <laughs> pulled up to the front door of the hotel, which is on the sidewalk. Instead of pulling into the property of the hotel, I pulled up to the front door that you could have walked out. So then the guy comes and finds me. He's in a fedora and a vest. And <laughs> he, wa he doesn't just tell me to pull into the thing. He actually, like, like a horse and buggy, he walks in front of my car and is basically vertically Naruto running through the street <laughs> to, so that I know exactly how to take a U-turn. He's like doing my flight path for me. And he's doing, like, you know, Naruto run, your hands go behind you. He was just doing that, but his arms are going straight down. And he's, like, hoofing it through the street, takes a left human vehicle style into the valet, runs around the valet to show me. He doesn't just go to the door. He, like, runs fully around the loop of the valet thing. It was quite strange to see, and it's beautiful to see. And it was I think, because um, the queen could not be outside in 60 degree weather for more than 45 seconds right and because the queen's chariot was more than six inches away from the front door and but now 200 Nathan years Rome, ago do you 200 think i don't deserve that if it was a thousand years ago Checkmate. you would just have slaves and we wouldn't even have to have this discussion <laughs> unfortunately we have to litigate it. oh would this be sick with this dude i had this fun experience just let sarah have a fucking slave you know what i'm saying that's what she's getting at but what I need to say is that, sir, you need to be brought back down. Uh, you need a reality <laughs> check and be grounded in some way. Because I feel like you are just in the, the stratosphere of celebrity and the stratosphere of Hollywood. And I don't know. There needs to be some sort of camp for people like you where, where you can just get people can like be mean to you and like you live in squalor just to bring you back because you need that. You know, you're going to lose your, if, if you keep going this way, you're going to lose your mind and lose touch with reality. And isn't that what you need to be in tune with your audience? You know, I you're going to. I know gonna... what the, the deprogramming uh, program would be because I just experienced it myself. And if any of your heads get too big, I might prescribe, Dr. Sarah might prescribe to you uh, doing a show at a college in <laughs> nowhere massachusetts where i did again i'm a queen on tv celebrity lifestyle lamborghinis helicopters ryan gosling you guys know the drill i showed up to a show in a fully lit fully empty cafeteria 30 students <laughs> showed up <laughs> the, ca the capacity of the room was 1200 and 30 students showed up and that was a Wait, wasn't it a community college too? I don't know. It was. You don't know. Like verified. The, okay, because I think Jack told me this story. It was a humbling experience, and it kind of brought me down. That's good. That's earth. good. You needed that. You needed that. That's and pretty good. All, and then yesterday, all of our friends said that I was annoying. So I kind of. Well, you are. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. That's just. Yeah. That's just the, them just telling you the truth, and <laughs> I'm kidding, Sarah. You're one of the most affable people on the planet, and everyone loves affable. being around you. No. What's affable? You know what? You know what? The fools and haters can't handle when a queen has 
one too many tequila sodas and by oh, one Oh, you were <laughs> drunk off the liquor, weren't you? <laughs> well, by one too many. When I the mean, queen gets liquored I mean up. One tequila soda. <laughs> yeah, you don't drink ever and like I feel have you been getting faded recently? Yeah, Eric held me down by my throat and forced me. He put a gun to my head and said, <laughs> we're going out tonight. It's Austin, Texas, girl. <laughs> well, you can't. You can't be around Eric and not get faded. He's too alluring. He He's alluring. By the way, where is Eric? You just you just totally just like hijacked. <laughs> like just came in, grabbed the mic, and Eric is just like picking up where his clothes he? right now. Yeah. <laughs> He's crouched on a stool. <laughs> Does he want to come back? Is well, he okay? Why? Why do you guys want him to come back? Well, we because don't. We, we're we're honored and we're humbled to have you on. Well, and um, Nate, what what do you need to tell me right now to get me back down to earth? To get you back down. Well, this is what I want to say: is you could offer me. I want to offer a service for friends of yours, SNL cast members, guests that come on the show. That if they really want to be brought down to earth, like. They could sign up for my like three week intensive where I kind of like treat them like shit and they have to work like real like uh, manual labor, fast food working jobs. And they and I put them in full prosthetics. This would be a great TV show, actually, where you get to bring, you know, it's like undercover boss, but just undercover lower class um, person. And they just get to experience life as a non celebrity and they get to remember, oh, People, when people people are being all fake to me uh, 24-7, you know, but when I look like, when I have the prosthetics and I'm bald and I have a gray mustache right. um, and you're, uh, you're just walking amongst the street, people treat you like shit. Nobody wants to talk to you. Nobody wants to be around you, all right? And people hate you, in fact. And I think people need to uh, realize that everybody around you is lying to you. Everybody around you is saying, is the yes man and happy and and wanting to uh, please the the queen or the king, um, so I think if that if you could just hand out my number to these people, and I think I could provide a service for them for a lot of money. By the way, Nate, I want to take this a step further. Okay, this isn't undercover boss. This is reverse the swan, and I'm saying these people should be getting full reverse plastic surgery permanent. Permanent, <laughs> permanent. So reversal. reverse plastic surgery. Now we're reverse having a conversation. Plastic. Now we're having a conversation. Thank you. So plastic surgery is when you do uh, a surgery which is cosmetic to benefit. <laughs> so reverse cosmetic surgery is not just the uglification surgically, right. but it's also putting hyper organic matter into your body. Right. So instead of using silicone or plastics, whatever they use, microplastics, mm -hmm. they would have to use hyper organic materials such mm -hmm. as what? What's hyper organic? Beans, rice, sausage, <laughs> shepherd's pie. <laughs> Salt, like salt. And they All have right, to dis disfigure it. themselves elephant man style right. by injecting hamburger helper kind of meat into their face, into their body, into their buttocks, and kind of Some say that, yeah. th then have to live surgically, medically as a, a hideous <laughs> freak. Dude, we're talking about hospitals today. Oh, oh yeah, that's, that's the theme. Of that's, that, probably, that. that's probably a good segue to bring Eric back. I just hear hospital and I go, Eric Rayo, sorry. But what about your amazing hospital joke? Or did I say hospital? Wait, yeah, you, you did. But we meant but you we know that you meant to say hotels and hospitals. Oh hotels. We're talking about hotels, sorry. I said hospitals because uh I was probably doing an equation in my head. But I meant say <laughs> yeah. hotels. And I almost said it again right there. But hotels. <laughs> well, Sarah, do you have anything to discuss about our topic of hospitality oh. in general or hotels or the hotel industry? You travel a lot. You're doing shows on the road. Do you have any opinion about hotels, hotel staff, I hospitality in general? I how early, you, how late you check in and how early you have to check out. Well, Jack's trying to set me up. He's trying to get... <laughs> Y'all know my show is $35 for a ticket. And he's trying to get a show for free, isn't he? Well, it's called a sneak peek, mm. like the morning show. I just have a bit Remember? where I think it's crazy that how a hotel check-in time is late and a check-out time is early. So my question is, then when am I in the room even? 
What am I paying right. for? Right. Did you guys? If you this hyperbolize, already? no. I, I, I've, I've, no, no. This is you're new paying territory. for the sleeping part now. I think the sleeping <laughs> part is when you pay for it mostly. But then it's. So you're paying to be unconscious. I'm paying four hundred dollars a night to free. be to to not know what's going on. Right. You, and you want to leave? Sleep right and now. You want to leave me and start talking shit you're about done. Joe Biden? You're done with us, aren't you? No, oh, I I've just... done my little thing. I've gotten out, <laughs> and I'm done. I'm checked out. All right, bye. Eric started doing a weird thing. He started showing me a seltzer that has beer in it, and going like, "Look, you want some?" <laughs> It's hop water. That's beer, isn't it? Oh, oh it's that's it's seltzer that tastes like beer. That's right. It's hoppy. I but I think hotels are a scam, and it's we should be pay. You should be able to check in at 10 a.m. and you should be able to check out the next day at 4 p.m. because that, my friends, is a day in the mm. hotel. So you want to make a new model? Yes, because what you're you're paying for nights of sleep, right? So you're experiencing an unconscious like Nate is saying mm-hmm. you're paying to be unconscious somewhere so that's how they get you and they're like actually your vacation has to be two days and I want hotels sleeps. right I want I want hotels because it sounds aggressive it sounds like we're hating <laughs> but understand that this is coming from a place of love we fucking love the experience that you provide top to bottom you're fucking doing it so well and we just want more and more um and so so don't if you're a hotel and you're listening don't be disturbed by this don't think that we don't respect you and love you it's just a little off-putting that you what is going on and what I'm are they doing I'm what could they be doing these hotels, cleaning girl. like airbnb you can miss me with that i don't want to stay in someone's dirty stinky house i want to be sleeping I do. under union labor roof i want to be in we a don't rock with unions building. on here Huh? We don't rock with unions or blue collar people on this. I just don't want you to get smoked in the comments. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So you're against Airbnbs, Completely really? Entirely dirty, stinky. I don't. I know there's a camera in the toilet. I know that the sheets are covered in someone else's skin cells. I don't. I want to be in a hotel. <clears throat> But let me reframe that for you, because what if the camera in the toilet is actually a doctor who's going to discover a malignant tumor Mm. coming out the out the out the booty? And then who else is going to everything? And then what if the skin cells on the bed is because Channing Tatum was just there, some (laughs) fucking powerful human being, and that shit's going to rub on your back? Now you got Channing Tatum back knee, which is good for you. See what I'm saying? I do need a camera in my butthole. Ask wondering. Let me tell you this. Eric Rahill again has held me down by my throat and forced me with my gunpoint to eat Tex-Mex food for every single meal. And know, not interior Jesus. Mexican. And <laughs> Why is he? He, he my, can just ask you if you want to go. Because he's he's my abuser. And <laughs> my hemorrhoids are on fucking fleek. Right fleek? Now. The hemorrhoids on fleek? Queen? <laughs> Yeah, and then someone who I won't name last night was like, you know, anal sex is good for hemorrhoids. <laughs> I was like, that really? can't be true. Just say that was Shane Gillis. <laughs> <laughs> Just say it. In fact, it was not. It was a perfect. Was that a nice... pickup line? Well, I didn't know at the time. No, I don't think so. <laughs> That's a great pickup line. <laughs> but I was like, that can't be true. That it's That's the ultimate Sarah hemorrhoids. Sherman pickup line. You know, hair, <laughs> anal sex is good for him. I go, take me out to dinner first. I go, yeah. I go, where's your hotel room? <laughs> I hope the checkout time isn't too early for what we're going to be doing in the back room. on topic, and that's how it goes <laughs> seamlessly, yep. just like Joy that. Tactics. You guys wanted Eric back, and then you realize maybe Sarah can bring something to the table too. Sarah, you're the ultimate podcast guest. I I, I think I've said this before. Bef- this was this was years ago. I said <clears throat> unsolicited to Danny Catlow. I said, you know who I think would ha- be an amazing. I probably said this to you, an amazing podcaster. Sarah Sherman. And I said this. This is the ultimate compliment. I said she doesn't even need anyone to be in it. Bill Burr style <laughs> Mondays. You're just talking at your fucking MacBook Mini Pro. 
admit so let's MacBook hear that. Air. Let's Just hear that right now. Okay, so I said that would be. Nate I think she would gone. be incredible at that. This is episode one. Sarah hosts. Welcome back to the Sarah Sherman podcast that exists at thirty four minutes mm-hmm. into the Joy Tactics podcast. Mm-hmm. Hey guys, it's me, Sarah. I'm just coming on to say I'm fucking a little bit pissed off. Okay, I'm in Austin, <laughs> Texas. Okay, I don't really know much about it. I've been here once before, but let me tell you, I can tell the city has changed. We drove by a CVS yesterday, and what did we say out loud in the car? Why does every building have to look like an urgent care? You know what I'm saying. What happened to Eric? Brought up a good point. Gargoyles. What happened? I just saw gargoyle. Can I stop real quick? <laughs> I take back that compliment that I said earlier, and I yeah, think you just you sounded like never, Bill Maher. You should stay like, so that far. Was really stay so far away from podcasting and just keep on doing the TV and no, and let me continue. You know, film. Thing. It's four twenty. <laughs> it's four twenty. The weed day. You know what they should recriminalize? Oh, it's weed. That's right. Get that drug out of the street. You just lost so. <laughs> Yeah, you're about to you're about Joy to get Tech. some very very bad DMs, some scary DMs from some very powerful people. That Mark, that Mark Cuban types it because Mark Cuban is about to put out a strain of weed that is gonna fucking blow your mind and change your tune. By the way, weed? Sarah, do you feel real feel feel yourself like I need a podcast at all? Like, are you are you sucked into that that realm? Do you feel the pressure of? having you you don't think about this at all oh i'm gonna do the squirm cast maybe i should do a pod maybe maybe i need to do a podcast i have so f- few funny things to say that oh <laughs> that, eric's that, laughing you have too many funny things to say no, i think that i have to save them for the stage or else those 30 you did just do a bit <laughs> when we asked you to do your podcast riff just now you did start doing a bit that you do on stage i never say recriminalize weed because i don't want to alienate the audience that's just a belief that you know that i have <laughs> yeah <laughs> no but nate you did actually tell me you told me this one time and i have told jack that it's one of the highest compliments i've ever received in my darkest hours is that I true can... jack is she lying or is that is that yes. true She's lying. No, she she's she's one of the phoniest people. <laughs> <laughs> that when I'm in my darkest hour, no, when I'm feeling completely lying. like I might as well be better off dead in the ground, and no one would give a <laughs> no one would give a who if I was six mm-hmm. feet under. I go, you mm-hmm. know what? That one time that Nate Barone said on the roof that you're you have always funny. Wow, you remember the say. exact. So you, do you have a uh, <laughs> you have the geolocation of every compliment you've ever received? <laughs> There's not many. In your There's life. not many. <laughs> <laughs> There's not many geo geographically. There are many compliments but they're oddly yeah. in the same place. Do you want to hear my geographic location of the worst insult I've ever received? <laughs> of course. Yes. Picture it. Math class. I think maybe 11th grade. I turn mm. around to the girl who sits behind me, beautiful, popular girl, name? dating the quarterback of the football team. I'm not going to say her name, Samantha Phillips. She lived across the street from me as well. I turn Samantha around to Phillips, talk to Google her. It, DM her. No, 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 no. Don't, 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 don't. <laughs> I sorry, think sorry, she's sorry, a really that. successful to doctor. Bleep it out. I it's meant to say don't do it. We're not going to bleep it, but don't do it. <laughs> she was a beautiful, popular girl. She dated a quarterback of the high school football team. I turn around to say something to her. And before words can slip out from my lips... She looks at my face like this. She goes, you know, your features are cute, but they don't come together. Oh, <laughs> That's my. awesome. And Only a teenager like, can I say that. I was like this in math class. I turn around to be like, hey, girl, like this. She says that, and I go. And then I was stuck, like, turned around like this, and I didn't know what to do because I was so shell-shocked. Nothing so before it, that. What? This was just just the. This was the first thing she said to you that first day. Thing was she just said to me this that sentence. Your features a, are all cute, but they do not come together on the face. That Separate. is a beautiful concept, to be quite frank. Wow. Because it's the idea that you can have. Let's say I give you a burger, right? Mm-hmm. It's got some of the best things in the world on it. Caviar. Uh. Diptyque fragrance spray and one of your best friends, right? Okay. Is that really going to make a good burger even though these things are amazing? So, so you that's agree. what she's so saying. So you agree. Right. 
<laughs> is this the person who no, r- yeah, yeah. made that tweet about SNL women being ugly? This is she's like doubling down on this, like. <laughs> no, but that what what did uh, I'm not gonna pop off about that, but that was crazy. What the tweet? Yeah. <laughs> it was. It's like she was like, is it just me or is every? I forget. Was it a video? Like yeah. she was like, is every woman that's ever been on SNL like so ugly? <laughs> Damn. It's like, literally, like I, I'm not I, myself, not included. I would say there have been some ar- arguably drop dead gorgeous <laughs> movie stars on the show. If you could see my DMs, I am literally. What I DM you yesterday? <laughs> what? <laughs> Nothing. Let's just say I am you in a, every female a- SNL <laughs> cast members DMs multiple times a day, uh, every oh. day from multiple accounts. Oh, uh, you did DM me a picture of you wearing a hat that says "I love women's cum." No, that is not what it said. <laughs> it said "women come first with a U," and Eric is doing the Batman stare. <laughs> <laughs> Eric's just looking out into the city. <laughs> well, Eric is on patrol. He's on neighborhood watch. <laughs> Eric, no, Eric's on suicide watch. Why does that look so like native to Eric just staring out of a hotel <laughs> Eric's glass? The Clint window. Eastwood of young you know leftist how pe- men. People say like, "Oh yeah, my baby was born like doing this," or "My baby was born, you know, whatever." Mm-hmm. Eric uh-huh. Grayhill was born with a rain-covered window stuck to his face looking at it like that. That's beautiful. <laughs> yes. <Eric. Washington. laughs> they want you to act so badly. <laughs> Was that Eric right? Wait, wait, wait. Um, Let us just get um I'm just curious what could possibly be going through Eric's mind right now hearing these he types is, of conversations. Eric is getting recognized <clears throat> left and right by the way. Is that well, what you mean? That's not a surprise. You don't have to tell us or anybody on Joy Tix that. He is like, I cannot walk down the street with this man without bitches be tripping. Wow. Well, you're saying it like you're surprised. It's no, sir. Yeah, Eric Rahill. I, I think you should I, leave 48 seconds. The bear, <laughs> eight seconds. What else? I mean, that's... I'm just saying, I'd like to get a breakfast taco in Texas without being disturbed. Right, right. <laughs> well, good luck. You know what? In I your brain. We, oh, uh, uh, Eric's doing push-ups against the counter. He just told you to say that he's <laughs> eating a bag of Fritos. <laughs> Eric, would you say that I'm being vacation Sarah and I'm being so fucking fun? Y'all have never seen me like this. Different. Vacation Sarah. Vacation Sarah. Wow. I'm drinking. I'm too. Stepping. You're letting loose a little bit. You deserve it. You like Texas. Like fucking. I like Live two sweaty gay guys whisk me off my feet at the, the honky tonk. That's and Eric they... and Shane. <laughs> <laughs> These two sweaty gay guys literally whisked me off my feet and twirled me around the dance floor and two stepped. That's fun. Do, you, do we all need to move to Texas and make the leftist army down there to balance it out? No, because it is a bit trying that a, that there are a lot of comedians who moved here for ideological reasons. We need to have the woke <laughs> mothership. <clears throat> I should go up at the comedy mothership tonight and go, guess what, bitches? Obama was right. You would because get the fucking assassinated. Out. They have drones <laughs> that, that detect AI language uh, models that... That will fucking kill you if you say that kind of shit. It's a mother ship. The motherfucker ship. What's like the reverse of saying retarded on stage? You know what I mean? Well, you just said it on our podcast, dude. You just said (laughs) it on our podcast, dude. That's not cool. Take it back right now. I am one of them. Not. I can't. I don't feel comfortable saying that, but I was. But I was in enough classes to get away with it once a year. Maybe you should give the mic back to Eric right now. Yeah. Cool. But I can't poop. Oh, in here now you're bringing Eric's up Eric's hotel poop. room we is too poop. small. <laughs> Eric's in the ghetto right now. <laughs> He's checking so, his phone in the sink. The well, can I say this, the, yeah. Sarah? If you're, if you know, how in the this is something that you can, well, Jack, that you can maybe understand more so when I t- speak about things in terms of politics. Mm-hmm. You know how well, Joe Mansion. 
if the president dies, the vice president gets to become president. And if the vice president dies, then the, I think it's like whatever, the who's next in line after that? The secretary of... Secretary of Defense. De- secretary of Defense. I feel like, Sarah, would you step into the role of if one of us dies, you have to, you're the next in line to be a host, co-host of Joy Tactics? I will kill to secure my spot. <laughs> All right. That takes you out of the running. Yeah, we can't have that, but... Thank you guys so know. much. I had a taco this morning, and therefore I have to do a liquid shit. Good luck with the hemorrhoids. Awesome. Have fun tonight. Be yourself. <laughs> you've done the work. Trust that you've done the just work. Have now fun. it's just about having fun. You know what I'm saying? Give it up for Sarah Sherman. <laughs> <laughs> Are you going back to your room? Guys, I actually you want to work out later? Yeah, we're going to work out. Jim. Bye, wow, sorry. and just like that, Bye. just randomly, she's on just SNL. randomly, she's on Saturday SNL Night Live. Just comes on the wow. podcast. That's just the like lifestyle, female, by the just way. like that, we and leave. yeah, I can't yeah, believe that dog. just happened. Oh my god! Can we so, decompress for a second? So <gasps> what? The holy hell was shit! That like? I was just holy nervous crap. as fuck, <laughs> dude. Whoa, man! Oh, We're really I'm doing it, guys. We're really in doing my it. room. This this wait uh, this is just my room, dude. That's <laughs> yeah. awesome. I'm fucking shaking right now. I was I don't know if you could tell Jack, but I was really nervous in the way that I was. Speaking. I could tell, dude, well, and you fucking I dropped just, the ball. I wanted you to know, be a writer next season. I wanted to know what you guys were talking about because I only heard her end of it, but I didn't want to disturb. So I'm glad that you guys got to have that moment. I would have been so nervous for you. And dude, you're next, by the way. Like, Stop. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you're next. Stop that now. I'm serious. Please. Yeah. That was crazy, man. <clears throat> I was funny. We don't even have to say what gave us joy because it's clearly that. It's that. Just talking to a celebrity again. So what's funny is now that she's actually gone, Eric, what was it like having... Um, I mean, we kind of need to decompress with Being what you've just out. gone through. Yeah. What happened to me was I literally was walking around the room. I was on my phone and I was just basically, yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, Crap. and I want to clear something up. I mentioned that one day Sarah should have slaves. I wanted to be very clear. That these are Eastern European style, right? Of course, you know. I think I think, Not, I think we assume yeah. that when you okay, cool, cool, cool. or I did. Okay, uh, I just didn't want Sarah slaves. to get in trouble because Sarah's, you know. So what the hell next. gave you guys joy this week? Oh, okay. I have been having so much fun with my friends here in Austin, Texas. We went to Barton Springs yesterday, jumped in the damn water, swam around. Oh, Barton. Went to a pool. Someone's pool is awesome. But you know what? Something that gave me joy, I did a very small show to very few people here, and uh, a bunch of joy tacticians came through. Wee. And this is the level of dedication. They messaged me. I was apparently on another show that I got pulled from. I didn't even realize, so they went to a show that I actually wasn't even on. But Good thank God. God I was able to get them into the show I was doing later that night. And guess who was there from the Joy Tactic- Tactician Squad? The guy who makes Ron all the Joy Tactics Jeremy? merch. Oh, no, really? he's not real. The guy who makes all the Joy Tactics. <laughs> oh, I'm thinking of Ron Burgundy. <laughs> Ron Jeremy is very real, and he should be hung for his crimes. Oh, um, he's hung for something. Chill. All right. But no, he came through and I had mentioned on, this guy's a screen printer, makes the hats. Maybe we'll get some merch going. Who knows? But I had mentioned that I had lost my bear shirt that we got on the set of the FX is the bear. And uh, this guy freaking hooked it up. He screen printed a brand new bear shirt for me and brought it to the <clears throat> show. Wow. That's hella nice. And I don't deserve it. And thank you, brother. I hope that person that. has children one day. I hope so too. And I hope they're well behaved. Children. Well, they yeah. will be. They will be. Because they'll know what it feels yeah, like to we'll be make taken sure care of, of and cared for. Right. In, in significant ways and long term ways. That's correct, sir. Wee. Yes. Okay. So, so, Joy Part Two, Jack, 
Um, you know what gave me joy as well? I'll tell you. I'm walking with one of the best things in the world in my hand. A bucket of chicken. Korean mm. fried chicken in a bucket in my hand. And what happens? The handle snaps. Chicken flooding all over the ground like a D-Day. You know what I'm saying? All of a sudden, I'm sad. What could this be about? So what I do is I walk back. This is at the Dodgers game. I walk back to the chicken people I say and I'm just expecting the worst I'm expecting them to say this is on you dude you need to own up to your mistakes you have to pay again $37 for this bucket of fried chicken okay I get there I'm really scared I'm shaking I don't want to embarrass myself I say listen the guy stops me he goes don't don't even say any more I know what happened to you just from looking at you I remember you and here's a free bucket of fried chicken. Go back, sit down with your friends. It's on the house. It's no problem. The birds are going to love eating what was on the ground as well. And enjoy the drone show. Every Friday night, they do an awesome drone show made out of lights. It's beautiful to see something that's used to kill in a vicious, vicious, unheard of ways by the Obama administration and beyond. Is to see them. To yes, to see, you're going <laughs> to like seeing them basically make interesting shapes of baseball players. So <clears throat> that's it. That's human compassion. And I, pre I appreciate that, man. Humanistic compassion. Well, um, <clears throat> well I, I would be remiss not to mention this, but what gave me joy was absolutely our, uh, our little double date that we went on me, me oh. and Jack. Mm -hmm. with the with the chicas to salsa and beer and so I, I think the the it's just the quality is so consistent there you get the same thing every time it's always it's always the same you never go there and you're like man i'm gonna roll the dice on this fucking fajitas plate it's always gonna be bussing the chips are always gonna be bussing the bean dip's always gonna be fucking bussing. crazily fucking good and you know what's fun? <clears throat> Sorry. One of the most, just one of the most fun parts of salsa and beer is when the spicy plate comes with all the smoke coming off of it and everybody starts the coughing. Jalapenos. Everybody's mm. coughing at the whole table mm -hmm. and that's fun and funny. Get a bit of coughing right. in. Man. Well, this, our lives are just going so crazy right now. I'm so happy that we just, I'm so thankful for this podcast that we get to check in amidst the chaos of a rapidly accelerating career life um whatever uh, body yeah. body appearances like physical <laughs> appearances changing so fast so mental health mental health Better degrading but but yeah i just like really just, appreciate you guys yeah man whatever you need let us know i and, am saying um, appreciate you too much to every single person i ever meet appreciate appreciate that hey good oh, to meet appreciate you appreciate you, you Hello, Eric Rahill, WME. It's good to meet you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. You say your That's agency something. right after yeah, you. Eric Rahill, <laughs> WME. To like family members. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, Man. we hope this was a hotel from the whatever other thoughts are going to be cursing you today. That's and that right. you enjoyed your stay. A we hope to see you again world. next time. A hotel is a haven in a heartless uh, town that you've never been to. That's whether right. you're there check whatever. out right. the joy tactics hotel is right now mm -hmm. and you're gonna have to get the fuck out bye now. bye goodbye well that concludes another incredible fucking episode of joy tactics head over to patreon.com slash joy tactics to unlock exclusive weekly bonus episodes and make sure to follow us on social media where we post fire tiktoks and hilarious shit like that and if you loved the shit you just listened to make sure to subscribe, rate, and leave us a review. Thanks for listening and remember, we are shaped by our thoughts, we become what we think. When the mind is pure, joy follows like a shadow that never leaves.